Yeah, it's not. All right, everybody. Here we are. I want to introduce to you Ken Wells. Ken is our board president and a very dear friend. And he is going to do a brief presentation from a class that he is taking at Summit Bible College in Bakersfield, California. How to talk so people will listen. And, and I'll tell you, this is something that we all need to hear, right? No pun intended. So with no further ado, I give you Ken Wells. Great introduction. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. Um, as Don mentioned, uh, How to Talk So People Will Listen was, was an incredible book. Um, but what, what's the game plan of the enemy when we really think about speaking or, or listening? Uh, what do you think goes on there, you know, in, in our walk daily? Um, I'll give you an example. I was on the ocean, and I uh, saw this incredible event, a dolphin. When a dolphin comes in to feed, he, he swirls around in a circle. I mean, he's kicking up water. It's just an incredible event to watch. I, I can't even tell you. But what's in that circle is a school of fish. The dolphin knows that if he keeps going around, he'll confuse that school, and some of those fish will get disoriented, come out and bang, that dolphin right there will devour his prey. Um, we've heard in scripture before that uh, Satan's like a roaring lion. He is he's roaming around to devour his prey. When we speak, when we talk, when we listen, if we're not doing it to edify, to bring life, to bring words of healing to somebody, Wow. Um, that causes chaos in, in our relationships with friends, family, and uh, it, it could lead to destruction. Proverbs is very clear and it gives us great instruction on how to uh, combat this. And, it, and, and these words are, are for our edification, for our instruction. That's what the Bible's there for. It's for, for us. And so, let me talk. Uh, three points. One of them is uh, our words can destroy people. Wow, what does that look like in, in your life? I mean, if, you, if you've spoken something that really, it's like, ah, oh, I wish I never would have said that. I have. I want you to know that. I have. I did that in my past. 1998, I, I came into a relationship with the Lord. Prior to that, I just knew Him. I didn't you know just really didn't have any relationship just knew of him and uh, and so uh, that morning that I woke up after I gave myself I, I was a different person I, I truly was my, my family my friends everyone everyone I encountered they thought I really they thought I was a kook they, they did they they like who, who is this who are you they saw I had two failed relationships in the past and, and they were like Right, you just went to religion. They they didn't know. My eyes were open now. And I want to listen. And I want to speak the words that bring life to everyone now. I, I do. And uh, and so words can destroy. Proverbs eighteen twenty one says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. It'll eat its fruit. And how sweet that is. Can you picture yourself in fall on a beautiful day in the apple orchard, picking an apple from the tree, biting into it, how incredible it is? Just the juice is flowing, how the sweetness of it, the crunch of it, it's just, that's what you want, right? Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It is. Right? It is. It is. <laughs> but you know what? When our tongue speaks something that isn't edifying, Bill, it's like that apple that stays in that tree too long you don't want to eat it. It's filled with worms and it's brown now and it's soft. You, you don't want any of that. So your words can destroy, so you have to be really careful. <clears throat> Next point is we are not to be too quick to speak in anything. I mean, people in, in, in relationships, you know, we let our emotions get involved and 
somebody's saying something to us, all of a sudden it's like, you just like, you're fighting back. Proverbs 29, 20 says, do you see a man hasty in his words? Hasty in his words. There's more hope for a fool than for him. So we are not to be too quick to speak. James talks about that you know, we are to be quick to listen, slow to speak. Point number three is uh, we're not to say everything we feel when we feel like it. Have you done that? If you just like, like said something, you know, if you just blurted it out. Proverbs twenty nine eleven says, "A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back." Those words, those proverbs, they're for us. They're for us. I mean, he wrote them there so we would hold on to them. It's so important that we do. So. This book, How to Talk, I, I saw it. I, I thought it might be, um, it should be black and white, like a zebra. And why, why did I think that when I, when I first looked at that? Because talking and listening are together, and it's black and white. I thought, oh, this is black and white. That's what, that's what I thought when I looked at it. And then I said, well, how to talk? And I thought, why do we talk? Why do we talk? We talk to build relationships. We do. We speak to people. And building a relationship, man, if somebody's speaking negative to you, it's like, oh, I, 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 you don't want to deal with that. So when we talk, we want to use words that are going to edify, build up, and strengthen. And so you're building that relationship. So people will listen. I thought, why should we listen? I'll tell you why I think we should listen. It is the foundation of good communication. It's, it, it is so important. It's that bedrock. You so need to listen. In Scripture, it talks about the house that was built on the rock, on a good, steady foundation. You know that? And when the storm and the wind blew, the house, it never shook. It never even moved. Nothing. When you're a good listener... That's what happens. You really need to listen because what you're doing is you're showing that other person you care. You're giving that person your attention. It, it, it can change everything. Studies have shown that tentative listening can bring the blood pressure down. When it, it, it can. When you really listen to somebody, the blood pressure, it, studies have shown it goes down. But when you're talking, your blood pressure goes up. I'd like to know what mine is right now, but but anyways, uh, well, well, my wife's in the medical field. She comes home, busy day, and she just wants. To, she knows. She knows I, I am going to listen. That's something that didn't happen overnight. I want you to know it, it didn't. I, I I had to work on this. But you know what? The benefit from that is amazing. It truly is. And, and so she tells me, and I'm just like listening. It's like yeah, right. I'm like looking right in her eyes. I'm just giving her everything I got. And she goes, thank you so much for listening. You were an incredible help. I can't tell you how much you helped me. I'm thinking, I didn't do anything. All I did was listen. That's how important that is, just to listen. So, Mark Twain said that if we were supposed to talk more than we'd listen, we would have two tongues in one ear. I mean, think about that, right? I mean, so what does that tell you? I mean, what was he thinking? He's thinking we should listen more, right? I mean, the Lord's saying, sit, listen to me. And then we're saying, Lord, speak to me, right? When we want to have a relationship with the Lord, don't we, when we get up in our quiet time in the morning, don't we want to say, Lord, speak to me today? He will. Have faith that he will. Have faith that he's going to do that, that he's going to speak to you. It's so important. And guess what? You're going to listen. You need to listen. So if he wanted you to talk more, right, he'd give you two tongues. <laughs> yeah, amen. So perhaps the most important thing we could ever give somebody else is our attention. 
If you look in somebody's eyes for two minutes, it says that you can develop a relationship. You can fall in love with them. So make sure you're looking at your wife. And if you're not married, be careful. If somebody's <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> right? So anyways, I'd like to close up a little bit. So uh, again, we'll recap a little bit. Uh, our words can destroy people. We talked about that, right? We are not to be too quick to speak, right? One of the most common ways we can be disobedient is with our speech. Okay? And we need to remember uh, Proverbs um, that are associated with that. And we are not to say anything we feel when we feel like it. In, in my household, I have a mission statement that Every day, I want to be a good loose listener, and every day, I want to edify and say something that's going to be encouraging. And when I do that, it, it brings that blessing into my life, because when I don't listen to my wife, I could shut her down, and I could miss that blessing. I don't want to miss the blessing ever. So, Lord, thank you for everyone today. Lord, I, I pray that you would enable all of us, Lord to live in total obedience to your laws and to your ways. Lord, you have said that he obeys instruction, guards his life. You guard his life, Lord. Praise you, God. Fill us with your love, your peace, and your joy, and that, that this would overflow into our words. May your spirit control our tongues in everything that we speak. Let it bring life, Lord. Let it bring life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my king. You are my redeemer. You are the one I turn to. No one else. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.